Hi guys and welcome back to The Player YouTube and today we've got something a little bit different. We have the one, the only, the Seat Taraco and I say it like that because it's actually named after a certain place in Spain if you do a little bit of uh, investigation on the old Google. This is the FR model and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get this car out on the road after we've gone around it, had a look under the bonnet and we've discussed the differences between this and its main competitors. Let's check it out. Okay, let's check out under the bonnet to see what you actually get. And the bonnet, the bonnet, the bonnet, the bonnet really is down here. In the UK, it's on the driver's side, but if you're abroad, then it's gonna be left-hand drive, so it'll be on the passenger side. Quite easy to work out and think about it. Ah, now, this is also difficult to find. There's a little catch, and you have to get your finger just right to locate it. It's not the easiest thing, as you can see. Ah, and finally, no, it's, yeah, there it goes. You see what I mean? It's little things like that. Just make a car. They either make it simple or make it difficult. I don't know why that is so difficult to get because it's quite a big yellow button. Right, moving on swiftly. There are two petrol engines, a 1.5 and there is a 2 litre. There is also a 2 litre diesel engine. The car comes in two setups. You can either have all wheel drive or front wheel, two wheel drive. On top of that, you have a choice of two gearboxes. You have the seven speed auto and you also have the six speed manual. Unfortunately, if you have all wheel drive, you only get the choice of the seven speed auto. Let's kind of have a look around the back and see how much gear we can get in here because apparently this thing is humongous. So what do you get round at the back? Well, a good looking car because this is really nice looking from behind, I personally think. I love this sort of big spoiler across the back here with the brake light all built in. You get a wash wipe here and a huge screen, which is really nice. And it's all tinted, everything around the back. But there again, if they're made in Spain, they need to be tinted because it is very, very hot. I like the new design of the LEDs. It sweeps right the way across here. These at night completely light up the whole spectrum across here. Underneath the SEAT badge or SEAT badge is the touch button. We'll do that in a minute. You get this rather smart Taraco insignia here. It actually looks like someone's written it. It's really nice. I like that. Sadly, where it starts to go wrong, it's a little bit lower here where you get the fake exhaust one either side because the real exhaust is just tucked underneath there. That's a shame because it could look rather nice if they had a pipe there and a pipe there, even if they were fake. You know what I'm saying? Let's have a look inside and see how much space there is. Okay, let's check out inside and see how much space is in the actual Taraco. Uh, good thing it's got an electronically assisted rear tailgate, which is lovely. And it goes nice and high as well. So if you're sort of standing here and it's pouring rain, you're trying to load stuff. Speaking of loads, it's sort of pretty much identical to the load space that you get with the Tigua. And uh, that's pretty obvious it would be. If you want to put these seats down, because there's not much space here, there's enough for a couple of suitcases, but that's about it. But if you just click in the middle there and drop them down, give them a little push, and there you go. Now you really have got some good space. I mean, that's a lot of space. This It's humongous. I'd say it was probably around about 750 litres in there. Um, also, hidden under here rather nicely. You know my pet hate are those uh, parcel shelves. Well, look, there's one in here, and it just sits in here beautifully. I'm going to take that out just for a second, because underneath there, well, there's your puncher repair outfit. Um, to be honest, I've moaned about this consistently as well. If you're going to go for an option on this, go for the option of having the space saver put in here because I'm pretty sure you can get that and that would make a huge difference. You're not going to do nothing on a cold windy night when you've pranged your wheel and you're trying to pump up the tyre because that isn't going to go anywhere. But the one lovely thing is at least the manufacturers are starting to listen to us reviewers that we don't want to see those horrible parcel shelves. It's big, it's spacious, there's a few bits in here as well. Look, you've got a shopping holder, shopping bag holder there. There's a couple of little cubbies either side, some tie off points, and there's a 12 volt adapter over there. And most of all, when you want to pop those seats down on the back there, you just pull that one, and you just pull that one like that, and they go down automatically. The only thing is you do have to give them a little push when you get round there. Speaking of getting round there, let's get round there, because this is seven seats, and we need to check out how comfortable it is for the passengers, including these two in the back here. Okay guys, let's uh, check in the back. Before we jump in here and take a look at the five-seater part of this car, let me just show you the easy way of pulling this forward. There's a latch just down here. If you pull that forward like that, it's not that much effort, and then you can just pull that little catch there like that, and that sits there like that, which is rather nice. There's a step on the side here, makes it quite nice and easy for you. You can actually climb in the back here. What I want to do 
I should have done this first, but I wanted to show you because you can actually reach around. You can pull that tag there and now you can see what I'm talking about. So let's be honest, this is designed for a couple of very small children, young children, and they're gonna find it great fun sitting in the back here. You've got a um, cup holder here and somewhere to put the uh, your phone or your iPad or whatever. Over here, not much space to put anything. To be honest, yeah, it's not a lot in here, but there again, it's just for the kids. One thing's good though, it does have two little windows, one either side, so they're not gonna feel car sick wearing there in the back here. Right, now, I have elegantly got to get out of here on camera, which is always good fun when you've got to reverse out and try and do this like that. I actually did it in one. Right, let's put the seat back up, move it back into place, and we will do likewise with this one. We will lift that like that, there we go. One good thing before we uh, we get in watch this that actually goes back as well and you'll also notice this one has got the Alcantara pack it's really nice I love these seats let's see what it's like to get in and out well, it's massive that door look how far it goes back it's huge so you've got clear access in you'd even get the mother-in-law in and out of here without a problem if you get my drift in the center here independent heating controls and you can actually control the temperature in the back here which is really nice and the direction lovely you've got a USB down here and on the right you've got a 12 volt adapter get rid of the 12 volt adapter it's old news it's not going to be used anymore order yourself a double USB charger that's much more like it um, central transmission tunnel is not too high it's not too bad one good thing is all the seat belts are hidden away look at that really nice and smooth and this is definitely a five seater it's a huge space in the middle there and it's very easy to slide across and sit there you get a great view straight through here especially with the big panoramic roof loving all that isofix points here isofix points here no flappy bits no bits to lose no bits to break in the center here you do get a rather nice shelf like that a little armrest and a triple cup holder the reason i say it's triple you've got one cup here one cup here and your energy drink holder in the middle must be good for people who love energy drinks there you go it's a very comfortable place to be as you can see when this seat is folded back like that you can actually put your head down and go to sleep which should be rather nice plenty of leg room loads of height up here and the good thing is you're not going to get car sick check out the size of that window it's absolutely mahusif and it's tinted yet again all we need to do then is pop around the front and have a look what the driver gets for his 28,000 uk pounds because that's what this car starts at Right, this, uh, let's have a quick look up front here in the Seat Taraco. And the first thing you're going to notice is this lovely seat. This is the FR, so it's got the slightly sportier seats in it. They're really super comfortable. Um, the driver's one in particular is an electronically adjusted one just down here on the side. Really nice and very easy to get in the perfect position. Um, likewise, the steering is very easy to manipulate. You've got a lot of manoeuvre there just simply down on that big clutch bolt there lovely on the right hand side here you can set your lights up very simple again just put them into the auto mode it will do everything for you I'm going to shut the door because we're going to start the engine up it was a lovely sound on that door it's very typical Volkswagen door when it closes I like that um, keyless uh, start so we use the foot on the brake and the touch button there in the center starts on the button as you would expect I'm going to put the key out the way over there let's have a little look at what we've got let's start with the display the digital display it's absolutely crystal clear I, I love it you've got three different modes on that display and that's adjusted here on the view button on the right hand side of the steering wheel so if you push that once it will scroll into what I call a minimal mode push it again it goes into the traditional mode that's what I call it so you've got the rev meter and you've got the speed meter speed speedometer on the right and if you push it again then it goes into a sort of futuristic mode where everything's digital and there's nothing to look at it's all right I like it and then at the top there you can scroll between the menus and you've got your knob button there which goes up and down through those menus so you can have a map in the middle you can have your fuel consumption in the middle you can literally scroll across and have it set up how you want um, voice recognition on here as well and also the tele telephone operation system on there as well there and then obviously the volume buttons at the bottom on the left of the steering wheel where we've got the cruise, con cruise control <laughs> I'm losing my voice today cruise control you've got distance control and you've got the lane departure warning system that's all set here using the resume and the set button again very simple to use 
plus and minus at the bottom and an old button to the left there all comes up on the uh, digital instrument panel when you're actually driving along. So that's the steering wheel. Again, good looking steering wheel. It's got the FR badge there and it's got some nice uh, red piping around it as well. I really like that. Eight inch touchscreen, TFT, really nice. It's, um, it reacts to you when you get near to it. Very Volkswagen. -y. If you're into your Volkswagens, you know all about that anyway. It's got a superb um, sat-nav system already built into it. However, if you've got your phone plugged in with the Apple Play or the Android mirroring, which this also has, then that will take over from that and you can actually use your Google Maps if you want to. Um, what I do love about this is that you get a separate volume button. So if you remember when I was talking about the Sayat Leon the other week, if you click up here now, you can see that video. Um, they were slider buttons here and they were definitely just designed for your finger to go on. So if you got into this car and it's cold during the winter, got your gloves on, it's very difficult. You've got to take everything off, touch it, move it to get your heating going. Whereas down here, these big, lovely big knobs here are very traditional style, which I really love. And that will set up all your heating and your air conditioning. It's perfect. Below that, we've got a place to put your mobile phone. Um, there's no uh, wireless charge in there, but it might be an option. Wasn't advised of that, but you can put your phone in there. There are two uh, USB ports in there and there's an auxiliary in and to the left there is a 12 volt adapter. This, as I said from the beginning, is the seven speed auto. Very easy to use gearbox and it's, it's so just beautiful, super smooth. There is a six speed manual available, but once again, just to remind you, if you get the all wheel drive version, you have to have the auto. Paddles under here as well behind the steering wheel if you go into the sport mode. And that takes me nicely onto the mode button. Mode button is here. You can change the mode button very simply. Again, even if you've got gloves on and it's cold, you can just turn the large knob at the bottom here to the left and to the right. It will come up on the screen. Individual mode, sport mode, normal mode, and eco mode. If you have the four wheel drive version of this car, the all wheel drive, it will come up with snow mode and all terrain mode as another option as well. Obviously this is the two wheel drive, it's front wheel drive as a two wheel model, a two wheel option. In here, nicely hidden, are a double cup holder. And I love the fact when you push the button like that, they come around and clasp, clasp your drink. Really novel that, we'll put that away there. You get a mouse size cubby in here with nothing in it. I really see no point in it, to be honest. Um, I suppose you could put a very small phone in there and then lock it away. The only good thing about it is you can set that to what height you want, which gives you a nice armrest. To be honest, I think I've said enough about this car up front. It does what it says on the tin. It's very comfortable. Let's get it out on the road. Let's see what it goes like and give you our final evaluation on the Seat Taraco. Once you get the Seat Taraco out on the road, you're gonna notice a distinct difference in this and the VW Tiguan, and also the Kodiak, to be honest with you. Um, click up here now if you want to have a look at that Tiguan review we did a couple of weeks ago because it's quite interesting to compare the two but if you're going to be test driving these three cars I think this one is probably the one that's going to impress you the most to be honest um, it's when Volkswagen decided to get their hands on Seat it was decided that that would be the sporty arm of Volkswagen that would be where like sort of you know like with Mercedes AMG and various others that have these sort of sporting arms and that is where Seat was intended to be and to be honest it absolutely nails it because with the Leon the other week again click up here now if you want to see the Seat Leon I love that car comparing it to the Golf was just it wasn't you know it wasn't even in the same ballpark completely different car even though they're very very similar to look at and on paper almost identical to actually the spec but this car has its own personality. It's definitely more sporty and it's definitely more fun to drive. You can throw this about, you get more, I don't know, just a better feel from it. I feel with the, the Tiguan, it was very wallowy. It was very, you know, you could get on the motorway and drive two, 300 miles and get out as if it was nothing. Whereas this car, I think you're gonna, this is more for sort of buzzing around town, getting your shopping. And once you've got rid of your seven passengers, or six passengers, shall we say, stick it in sport mode, use the paddles and have a bit of fun. And that's what this car is all about is having fun. Um, it's well set up, it's got some good safety aids, it's got blind spot mirrors, autonomous braking in town, it's got a really good reverse uh, parking sensor system, so it doesn't actually use a camera as such. I don't like the cameras anyway, when they get wet you can't see what they're doing anyway, so it, they completely waste the space. But this uses the sensors and it's really good because the sensors actually pick up and tell you where that is coming from, so you get the feeling from the actual part of the car that's getting near to the obstruction. Um, it's got all the bits, the cruise control, the lane departure, the distance control. There's everything on it. 
The only thing, only thing where I can't give it 10 out of 10 is the fuel economy because this car is only getting 26, 27 to the gallon. I'd expect far more out of a family car, you know, a seven seater family car. I would have said at least 40, if not up into the mid 45, 50 even. Um, however, that's its, that's its Achilles heel, shall we say. Price wise, well, it sits well in the bracket with the Tiguan and the Kodiak. It's around 26,000 UK pounds entry level, and that's almost identical to the Tiguan and the, the Kodiak. So, you know, really it's just gonna be down to you to go out and have a test drive in this car, or all three cars, and make your own assumption. I can only suggest, my suggestion is, this is the car for go, to go for, even though it's slightly less on the mileage compared to the other two on the economy. You've been watching me, AJ the player. Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it. And don't forget, if you do like watching what we do, like, subscribe and comment. And I will get back to you on your comments, providing they're sensible and not rude or anything silly. Um, and I love answering the comments because I think it's, you know, it's one of those things, it's part and parcel of what we do. And part and parcel of what we do is not just YouTube videos. We have the player and the player is a men's bookazine. And I stress it is for men. And I'm sorry, ladies, if you're watching, but us guys have got to have some things to ourselves. Um, and this magazine is designed for us. It's got golf, it's got cars, it's got boats, it's got food, it's got, well, if I carry on, I'll be sat here for the next half an hour explaining everything that the player does. You can go and have a look at it. It's down there, it's www.theplayer.co.uk. It's coming up now. Go there, because you follow me or you've watched me on YouTube, you can have a free online copy of that magazine. It's a 200 page magazine. It comes out every three months. It's well worth taking a look at, at least. And you can have it for free just by subscribing and putting your email into the subscription database. Simple as, no big deal. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next week with another car. I'm really looking forward to it. Weather's good, driving's good, but above all, take it easy out there. Safe driving, guys. See you soon.